Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my solar journeys. We're now into March, so it's time to look back at my February solar generation and my electricity usage throughout that month and to see how we're doing in terms of making back a payback back on my um, original investment in the solar panels and uh, battery system um, and how much money we've just generally saved. And also, I'm going to use this opportunity to look at my prediction that I made back in January um, to see how much money I'm going to make this year and see if that is prediction is still correct. Um, and spoiler alert, no it's not. So um, we're going to have a look at that as well. Um, just to give you a brief insight of what's coming up on the channel, next Friday I'm going to release a video uh, where I look back at my past six months of having solar panels and the money made from that. Um, so this basically marks six months since I've had the solar panels but it also gives me the opportunity to look at how much generation you can expect through the autumn and winter i.e. the worst months so that should be quite interesting to do um, I'm obviously taking um, March to be the beginning of spring I'm not sure if that's an official um, uh, definition of when spring begins in March but it's one that I like to think of so uh, on another note, um, if you are watching this video and you haven't subscribed, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it really does help uh, the channel. It allows, If I get up to that thousand subscriber marks, I'll be able to take money from the adverts that appear before this, rather than YouTube taking all the money. So it's a massive help if you can hit the subscribe button. And if you can share the channel with friends and recommend it to friends, that's great as well. Okay, so let's have a look at what's happened in February. So obviously February is the shortest month. And here is the graph of our February generation. So as you can see, we've had quite a few days where we had a lot of generation in uh, February. Um, quite a few days over the 15 kilowatt hours. Um, just for your background, we have 4.65 kilowatts um, of uh, Q-cell solar panels on the roof. That's 12 of them. That feeds into a 5 kilowatt um, solace inverter. And that feeds into a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery and obviously into the house as well and our daily usage or average usage is between six and seven kilowatt hours so you can see that quite a few days we're well above that so we've got as you'll see we'll have quite a bit of export and there were a few days where we were a little bit below that so we were relying on import from the grid so the best day or the worst day the start of the worst day uh, was the 4th of February where we generated only one kilowatt hour from the solar panels um, but our best day which was the 23rd we had 22.8 kilowatt hours generated um, and that means that in total in February we generated 272.6 uh, kilowatt hours and if I now flip off to this graph, you can see how that energy was used. So, oh, and a little bit where we get the import. So, um, throughout February, we used uh, 90, 194 uh, kilowatt hours. So that's a bit lower than our monthly average, which is normally about the 200 to 210 mark. But then February is the shortest month and is two days shorter than all other months. So that would explain why we're that little bit down. So if it wasn't for that, we would be over the, uh, we'll be right in the, um, the middle of that range. Um, so what this graph shows is our usage of our energy or where the, en where the energy is coming from. So the, uh, Yellow is um, the battery, so this is where we've charged the um, battery and then we've used energy from that battery. So you can see we've got quite a, um, a consistent amount of battery use throughout February. Uh, the green is what we call self-use, so this is when we generate it on the roof and we use it in real time. So if we're generating two kilowatts on the roof and we turn the other one on and use two kilowatts, um, that's self-use. Um, the red is the import, so that's import from the grid, and as you can see, we have quite a lot of days throughout February where we had little to no import. It's only costing us one or two pence, so it barely registers on the graph. And the blue, um, this is our use, this is the export, so this is when we're sending back to the grid. And again, you can see on quite a few, um, not, a, not a huge number of days, but um, 
what's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. At least 10 out of the 28 days, we were getting quite significant levels of export to the grid. So that's excess energy that we're generating that we can't use and we can't store. So we send it back to the grid. I should point out, we do have an electric car, but because I've only got on-road parking, um, I can't have a charge point for uh, uh, fitted. I have been on at Swansea Council to allow systems like Kerbo or Charge Arm or Charge Bridge or Gully to be installed, but they're quite adamant they not they don't want to allow it um, for no actual obvious reasons. Um, so that's a bit of a problem because otherwise I have to rely on going to public chargers, which obviously don't use green electricity. Um, so yep, Swansea Council really good on its uh, green energy commitments there and trying to become net zero by whatever date they are uh, setting themselves. Um, anyway, rant over. Let's get back to the graph. Um, so as you can see, this is our usage. So the actual amount of um, energy we said the energy we used in um, February was that 194 kilowatt hours but we generated 272 unfortunately because of uh, we don't can't store it we and we got the export it means out of that 194 uh, we imported um, 32.73 kilowatt hours and we of our own energy to be used uh, 161 of it, which means that our uh, export of our energy, uh, or the amount of energy we exported, was where has it gone? 117.7 uh, kilowatt hours. Again, if I put that into a, into a car, that would have been between four and five hundred miles of um, free range, free green uh, range. I would have got. So, it really does put into um, context. Um, the importance of having solar panels and having electric cars and also being allowed to charge at home. Anyway, uh, back to the uh, data. Let's now have a uh, look at how much money we saved and spent. So because we didn't use, we didn't import that 162 or 61.2 kilowatt hours from the grid and we self-generated that, that saved us our tariff is uh, just over 19p from British Gas per kilowatt hour of import so that saved us £31.58 uh, um, because we had that 117 hours uh, kilowatt hours of export and we get paid from so energy 5p per kilowatt hour that gener uh, uh, made us uh, £5.89 so if you add those two numbers together, you get total money in in February or off our payment to, um, uh, to you know on our payback period. Uh, that would be thirty seven pounds and forty six pence. The money we spent on import, so this is excluding the standing charge. We have no control over the standing charge other than it's about twenty four p a day. Um, but obviously we can't do anything to reduce or change that. So the money just on import. Um, that we've got sent to British Gas is £6.41, so a whole month of electricity import for just £6.41. So this has meant that in February we were 16.88% reliant on the grid, so really, really low. So now it's time for that prediction, and as you can see from the the, uh, the title of this video and obviously the little thumbnail that starts off this is quite a clickbaity title because um yeah it's just a clickbaity title um so in january uh, when i made my uh video summing up uh 2022 i made a prediction for 2023 which was that december was going to be roughly equal to january um november was going to be roughly equal to february october roughly equal to uh, March and um, this would then allow me to predict how much money I was going to make in this year from the data that I'd already collected last year from the last four months of that. Um, and as you've seen from my recap um, from January usage, which I released at the beginning of February, my prediction for December to January was actually fairly close. My um, This assumption that February was going to be similar to um, November, I was well off. My prediction was uh, totally wrong. So, just to compare 
I've put this table up on the screen now. So, in November we generated 177 kilowatt hours. This month we were nearly 100 kilowatt hours more. So that was a fail in that part of the prediction. Used, that was roughly the same. Um, so at least my prediction there was right, but I know that we, we always use, as I say, between 200 and 210 kilowatt hours per month. And just because there's a um, few shorter days, that counts for that. Import, yep, well off on that. Um, we imported in November 70.8 kilowatt hours. This month only 32.7. So um, I was nearly a factor of a half off with that. Um, we used double in um, November than we did in February. Uh, money on import, therefore we were basically, um, I was more than 50%, uh, uh, or again, half what it was in November. Uh, saved money, we were um, over 20% better, uh, £25.32 uh, in November compared to £31.58 this year. Um, seg payments we would double as well um, money saved we were £10 out so £10 may not sound a lot but when you're talking about over the course of a year or whatever that can mount up and when you were only talking about um, sort of £450 to £500 of savings over a year or money made over the year it does sort of come out uh, as a bit of an error so it'd be interesting to see what happens in March we could have just as a scientist we now have to explain why our assumptions were wrong it could be um, that February was just unusually good weather and we had a lot of sun and not much cloud and November was particularly bad last year so that's one explanation it could be that the assumption is just wrong in the first place obviously comparing November, March to October will give a, a far better indication um, the other thing is we probably do need to have multiple Novembers and multiple Februarys to be able to do a direct comparison and average them all together because this is basically just a sample of one so that's where it could be wrong. Um, um, uh, at least it's wrong in the right direction for me, or wrong in the good direction as far as money being made from this, because I'm £10 better off than I would have been. So, yeah, that's my uh, summary of February. As I say, if you can subscribe to the video, please do. This is, as you see, lots of YouTubers say this. It really does help um, people on YouTube if you do do this. Anyway... Uh, thank you for watching. Um, keep an eye out next Friday for my video where I summarise the last six months. And I'll see you again in a video very soon.